You know, he made, I, I thought he made significant gains and most importantly, his confidence and level of, you know, competing. You know, he, uh, I think all young quarterbacks have to go through that process of learning to trust uh, themselves uh, in what, you know, we're asking them to do. You know, I think last week in the same news conference, somebody asked me about, you know, what I see in Tyrone in practice. That's what I see in Tyrone in practice. I see him competing like that. I see him nailing, mm -hmm. you know, playing at a high level. You know, that's why, you know, there's never been any, any doubt in our minds. There's just been nothing but conviction that he's the guy that's our starting quarterback. He's a guy that, you know, that, that we need to develop. Um, you know, and he's, um, you know, his challenge was to do what he did on, Saturday, which was to compete, you know, and just really trust what he'd been, you know, taught and what he knows. What's the best thing he did Saturday in your opinion? I just think it's that, you know, I, I, not to make it too simple, but I thought he was very competitive, you know, with the, his style of play. He played fast. He played smart. Um, you know, he had, um, he was spot on with all of his checks, uh, moving our protections. He didn't miss a beat. And um, he did a really nice job in our, you know, in the read game. Uh, you know, he, he had one miss read. And when I'm talking about that, that's our run pat, you know, our run options. Uh, he had one uh, miss read. And after that, he was, he was pretty much spot on. And then when the play broke down, I felt like he really did a great job there of, you know, and, and, you know extending plays and making plays, both with his feet and with his arm. Sean was telling us yesterday that he feels more comfortable when you go no huddle or pull because right. the defense is yeah. Is that something that you're taking into consideration? Yeah, we always do. You know, I know that's a way for all the young players, especially, you know, you get, you know, the defenses tend to numb up, you know, go a little bit more vanilla for you. Um, you know, and plus, it, you know, the, the players, they're moving so fast, they're not overthinking the process. So it definitely helps out, especially young, younger quarterbacks. Might be a dumb question, but what's the downside of that if he likes it? And that it well, works? you know, it's, it goes back to our style, you know, what we're trying to do with putting together a whole plan, you know, helping our defense too. You know, the time of possession is always important to us. There's certain things that we want to run, um, you know, certain styles of play that we can run from a no huddle because there is a little thinking going on. There's other things that require some, you know, for lack of a better term, a little, or, you know, uh, orchestration, a little bit more, you know, you want to put a little bit more uh, juice on it with maybe a motion or a shift. Uh, those aren't so easy to do in a no huddle. You're a little bit more static. Um, you know, so, you know, you know it's, sometimes it's by style of play. And then other times, you know, uh, you know, it goes along with what we're trying to do to help, you know, for a team win. Uh, so we was always kind of rolled. Coach, does it, could it help his confidence though? Because if he's doing well, mm -hmm. and executing well, does that breed his confidence to do some of the yep. other bigger picture things you want? Yeah, there's no doubt. He's he's. Um, you know, we were talking about the other things outside the no huddle stuff. Yes. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. He's he's really. He's really catching on to you know what we're doing with the passing game, especially. You know, you you know if you guys everybody saw him playing the spring game, you see if you remember the spring game and remember, see where he's at now, it's a total transition. You know, and he's really grown enormously, in my eyes, and um, he has confidence in what he's doing and why we're doing what we're doing, and it's really good to see him do that, so he can take on more things now. And we've given him more. I mean, we're, you know, we're every week we continually, you know, we've done this ever since he's became the starter. We've given him more and more and more. So um, this past week he did a lot of things with our protections, which were, you know, I didn't know if we could, you know, be there with a first time starter um, this early, this fast. And he's, he, he did a great job with it. Not to belabor the point on the no huddle up mm -hmm. double, but. Typically, when you guys have done it, it's at the end of the games when you need points, mm -hmm. uh, including Saturday and last two drives. Is there right. points throughout a game earlier where you can maybe pick and choose a spot mm -hmm. to, to get going? Yeah, we usually talk about it. You know, we usually talk in, in terms of, um, you know, jumping into it, you know, maybe, you know, in terms of a series. You know, we've talked, uh, you know, about jumping into the second or a third or a fourth series, maybe the first series coming out at halftime. Um, those are all things that we, we you know, we have a general conversation with, and then when we get into the game, a lot happens with the, you know, how the game's being dictated. You know, we had the ball for what 50 some snaps, I think, the first half, somewhere along there. Yeah, so we wanted to, you know, we were running the style of play we wanted to run. What we needed to do is finish, 
you know, we needed to clean our play up and finish. And, you know, with that many reps, you know, and that, you know, and that kind of production, you know, because we had some yards to go with that and explosives, um, you know, that's where we need to grow. We need to finish drives. Somebody, somebody described, talked about the it factor, mm-hmm. the quarterback. People, I guess, define it different ways, but how, how do you define it? And do you, based on how you define it, do you think Tyrone either has it or is getting to that? Well, the it factor is something that is, it's instinctual. You know, it's just like you, you know, it's like you, you when you go out, um, best analogy probably is going out and playing pickup basketball. You know, it's just, you know, you're playing a one-on-one against a buddy, it's just natural. And that's what, uh, those instincts can be developed. I think a lot of that goes with confidence, uh, you know, and, and then there's a style of play that comes along with it. Uh, you know, and those are all things that can be developed. So Ty's developing those things. You know, again, you know, where he's come from and, you know, what we're trying to do with him is develop those things. You know, because I, you know, one of the big things I want to do with, the, with Ty is not limit him, his creativity. I want him to play outside, learn to play outside the offense because that creativity is very important. You know, when a play breaks down, you know, taking a scramble run, he had a few, you know, he converted uh, a key third down drive, you know, and, and then, you know, extending plays, uh, passing plays by moving in the pocket. He has some unbelievable pockets. You know, we work hard on, you know, creating protection in the pocket. You know, I do several different drills to move him around, and he did it. He did it. He was a textbook at it. He would kick, he'd slide, he'd create protection, find his window, create lanes in the, in the protection, and, you know, get his ball out. So he's learning. All those things are things that can be developed. Now it's a matter of taking those tools and then using them. And that's what I was referring to earlier when I was saying, you know, what Ty needed, to, you know, it, it, I saw it in practice. You know, I kept telling him, I said, dude, here's the deal. I see it in practice. Every day I see it in practice. I see you doing this. Now stop thinking in a game and play, react, see and react, see and react. And trust yourself. And, you know, I, and I asked him after it was over, I said, you know, during it too. I said, you having fun? He said, yeah. I said, okay, you found what I'm trying to get you to find. It's just really, I, you know, Southern Illinois, I'm a simpleton. I just call it competing, you know? So yeah, he did that. In terms of that comfortability, mm-hmm. Coach Strong was asked this week about the play calling, getting mm-hmm. plays in, and just some right. of the administrative stuff. Mm-hmm. Talk about maybe a play like the two-point conversion play. How right. much of that is Tyrone getting comfortable? How much is that coaches? Maybe it's personnel? Uh, well, that was have to do with the headset. You know, the two-point play. We, we always carry in, uh, you know, Ty, Ty's had a little problem, you know, with you know, the signals. You know, he'll, he'll second guess himself at times. You know, he'll, he'll have to ask for it twice. Um, you know, so, you know, what we've always tried to do is we, we've st- streamlined it for him. We, we keep working on him, you know, because that's another thing that sometimes goes, you know, goes unnoticed or, you know, you don't think about it enough, you know, how important those things are. Because he's got to get that total communication before he gives the communication in a huddle or even in a no huddle situation. So, you know, those things have to become habit. So you got to do them over and over and over and over and over again. You know, and, and that is a, another aspect, not only the place part of it, but also getting the play. You know, going, you know, forgetting what just happened. I, you know, I think sometimes when Ty's had issues with that, it's because, you know, he's thinking about something that just happened as opposed to moving on to the next play. He's got to move on to the next play. Those are all things a quarterback has to grow through and learn through. You don't have anything on his wrist or anything. Uh, no, we just have a limited limited wristband calls. That's it. You know, we don't have very many because we're by and large because we're so you know we have a very simple system. You know, it's it's a it's really about two or three signals and it's done and over. Uh, but we we do have some things that are on a wristband for him. What about third quarter? Why can't you, score in the third quarter? you know, I think you know it's a matter of coming out and getting rhythm. You know, those are all things that we have to address as a staff. And I'm looking at. I've gotten away from doing some things that I've done in the past that I'm going to I'm going to get back to doing. Uh, just because I think it, you know, I know now how to create rhythm for Ty. I think Ty is our rhythm. When we get Ty going, um, you know, that, that creates our rhythm for as an offense. So, you know, I know, I better know, better understand what gets him going. I know what he needs. And he and I talk about it. I can talk to him about it now because I, I think he's getting a, he understands when I'm talking to him. Uh, you know, I give a quarterback a lot of ownership because he's a guy that we got to get going, right? He's the captain of the deal. So it's about creating rhythm for him, and I can help him with that. That's, that's, that's something I can help him with. 
Sean, no, because it was in and out deal. It was really on our end. You know, the people upstairs were fixing it. You know, they it, it was in and out. It really affected, I think, about three or four of us. And I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not the electrician expert. I have no idea why, but it just did. What did you have at Taylor Doyle on Saturday, especially getting? starting a new position under such short practice. He, he did a really nice job. He, uh, you know, he was a hard spot for us that we needed, especially against the nose guard we were playing. Uh, I thought he battled and, and held his own and, and did a really nice job for us. You know, when you're asking a guy to go in, centers like quarterback, it's a hard transition because now you're captain and everything for the entire offense, the entire offensive line, the blocking patterns. And he did a really nice job of identifying, communicating, getting it echoed out. He's such a conscientious guy too. You know, he's a smart, bright guy, and he 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 takes a lot of ownership in that. He did a really nice job. And it was a real hard spot for us and battled. What did you see from him that gave you confidence that he could move into that position and have have success? Well, we we've been working him as a backup, and um, you know he he just was a he's just a little harder spot in there for us. And uh, you know when you get in some of the, some of the people that will play in our league, you know Oklahoma's the example. Obviously, this past week they've got a you know nose guard who's a big man, a big strong man, and uh, you needed a hard spot in there to you know because you would get singled up a lot. That's why they play a nose guard, and um, you know he was uh, our best option to do that and make the matchup. So that was a matchup that we felt like we needed to make, and you know he had enough experience in practice. You know, we're, you know, we felt real comfortable doing that. Joe had been working him uh, for, you know, several weeks now. It's just, you know, backup role. Sean, did you have time for two last minutes? Sure. Heard some talk today about uh, David Ash looking into baseball. Do you know anything about, does he have a pretty good fastball in your I have no office? idea. You know, he had mentioned that, you know, it, David is just, uh, you know, just a natural competitor. And he had mentioned that he was really getting bored about, you know, he's missing athletics. He's missing the, you know, he's missing competing and playing. And I, you know, I think, uh, you know, he mentioned it, and I, I didn't think he was serious. And obviously, he's serious. Coach, so. um, you're back in, in, in 2011, you guys, mm -hmm. you guys started 2 and 4, mm -hmm. same as this team is, and then you guys kind of, you know, flipped it and started mm -hmm. having sort of success. Now, what did you guys do back then, and are there any similarities with this Chicago team? There, there's, you know, there's, there's quite a bit, really, honestly. You know, we were a team in transition. Uh, different type of transition. It was more, um, it was more total youth that all the way across the board. Um, I mean, we were, you know, I, I remember we were playing West Virginia. We had eight freshmen out there, and we're at their place. And then we're talking, talking true freshmen. And that was Teddy's class. So it was, um, you know, very similar. And there was a lot of transition. Um, what was a little bit different is that they were a lot younger players. There were a lot of first year, I mean, true first year college students. And you know what we did was, um, you know, we made there was more of a youth movement that went on at that time, and um, you know we just uh, we just buckled down. We knew we were a program that was in transition, and that we had to, you know, uh, you know, work the process, and you know we, we just we continually worked to to move us forward. And you know by the time the season ended, we became a good football team, and we got out of spring ball, we became a, a really good football team. And then the 12th season, we became a great football team. So we grew to it. Yeah, it helps us because we've been, we've been, you know, at least Charlie Vance and I, BJ, we've been through it. I mentioned these other guys in their careers have been through it. You know, you know everything in college is uh, football or any football. I mean, you talk to anybody in pro ball, I'm sure it's the same way. It's a, there's a process involved of developing players and developing a program. How much would it help Last you more? more? Marcus Johnson involved in that for the first time all year. We've got Jackson and Paris too. Yeah, this past weekend. Yeah, it helps out a lot. I mean, Marcus, uh, you know, Marcus had a couple other opportunities that he needs to finish, but it was nice getting him involved because he can make he can make a difference in the game. You know, he's uh, he's somebody we're always mindful in working in the target, and um, you know how we match him up and where we put him. You know, in our different formations. You know, to create those touches for him. But he helps a lot because he takes pressure off of John. He takes pressure off of Jackson, and now you got a third option in there. And uh, you know we would like to get even more than that too.